Your 3D printer isn't printing cleanly. Maybe the problem isn't the printer, maybe it's just your belt tension. I will show you exactly which tool you really need. A lot of people use smartphone apps to check belt tension on self-built or budget 3D printers. Sounds practical, but honestly it often works terribly in reality. Especially when the belts are short or particularly soft. That's why I'm today testing four real tools for you. By the end of this video you will know exactly which one is worth your money and which ones you can safely skip. I keep getting messages from people asking how to correctly tension their belts, especially on self-built printers like a Voron or other Core XY machines. The thing is, a lot of apps that measure belt frequency just don't deliver good results. Sometimes because of the microphones aren't good enough. On the other hand, because the belts are too short or too slack. That's exactly why I decided to test four real measuring tools. Here's what we are looking today. The BTT Belter Belt Tension Tool for about 50 euros, the Feistek Belt Tension Tool for around 10 euros, the classic DIY GT2 Belt Tensioner for about 10 euros in parts, and a slightly improved DIY GT2 Belt Tensioner Remix with ball bearings for around 40 euros in parts. Let's start with the Big Tree Tech tool. This tool is based on a thickness gauge that was modified for belt tension measurement. It's an electronic device powered by a coin cell battery and overall feels pretty high quality. The main measuring unit is made of plastic, but the frame and the tension arms are aluminum. Super sturdy. Big Tree Tech also provides three handy 3D printed accessories that you can clip onto the tool. They make it much easier to operate the tool one-handed and the test tip gets wider so it should guide the belt more securely. After turning it on you can reset the measurement with one button and switch between millimeters and inches with another. Really straightforward. Now let's move on to the Feistek tool. It's also electronic and powered by a coin cell battery. The two support points where the battery rests are made of metal but the rest of the tool is entirely out of plastic. You can feel it immediately. It feels cheap, almost like a toy. The third tool I tested is the classic DIY GT2 belt tension, using a spring, a few screws and some printed parts. You can build a really clever little device here. I'm telling you, once assembled and creased up a bit, it feels super solid. The tension movement is smooth with no resistance except from the spring. Our final candidate is a remix of the DIY tool, which uses ball bearings in the tension mechanism to reduce friction even further. It makes the operation even smoother, otherwise the two DIY variants are almost identical. You now might wonder how do these tools actually work. It's simple. The belt is placed between three contact points. The tighter the belt, the more pressure it applies to the tensioning mechanism. The device measures the pressure and shows you a value, either analog or digital. But now the big question, what value are we actually aiming for? Let's start again with the Feistek tool. Here's the big issue. Feistek doesn't provide any official reference table. That means you can match your belts to the same tension, but you will have no idea whether you're actually in the optimal range. The Big Tree Tech tool is a bit better. Big Tree Tech provides a basic manual and even a small calculation tool, but honestly the table they provide doesn't seem 100% reliable. It looks like they tested only a few points and then just extrapolated the rest. You can see that because the tool's maximum physical range is about 7.5 on their scale, but they list values up to 12. Physically impossible because otherwise the center point would drop below the two other points. The DIY tools though are really well documented. You get a detailed manual including calibration instructions for GT2 and GT3 belts. Calibration is done with a piece of piano wire. You insert the wire, tighten the spring until the indicator points exactly at 1.9. Sounds complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. Problem is, the original piano wire is hard to find outside of the US. Alternatively, you can also calibrate it using weights. More on that later. And if you want to go even deeper, Luke's lab has an online calculator where you can enter your specific setup and get the correct belt tension value. But heads up, the values are given in pound force, so you will need to convert it if necessary. One more thing about usability. The Feistek tool is really bulky. In tight spaces like the AB belts on Voron, it's almost impossible to insert it properly. And because of the chunky housing, the belt gets preloaded, giving you false 
and wrong measurements. The PTT tool also has a weak point. The printed accessories affect the accuracy a lot. If your print is slightly too thick or too thin, or if your flow rate was off, your readings will be totally off. That's why I marked the exact dimensions of my printed part, so you can compare it with yours. With the DIY tools, on the other hand, everything matched reference values right away. No issues at all. That's why for the rest of the test, we will use the DIY tool as the baseline. Now, let's talk about cross calibration. If you already bought a BDT or Fistick tool, no worries. You can still create a reliable reference. I built a simple test setup for this. A frame, a belt clamped between two points and a weight hanging off from it. I used a water bottle with zip ties to fine tune the weight. First, I calibrated everything using the DIY tool. Then I checked the same tension with the BDT and the Fistec tools. Here's what happened. The BDT tool looks super high end, but shows a huge amount of variation. Sometimes it even slid along the belt, completely messing up the measurement. The Fistec tool, on the other hand, gave surprisingly consistent readings, even though it looks quite cheap. After a few tries, I managed to build a usable reference table for most setups. In a DIY tool, it matched exactly what the manual says every single time. Now let's get practical. Let's take my Voron 2.4 as an example. According to the DIY tools manual, the belt tension should be between 1.9 and 2.3, roughly 9 to 14 newtons or about 2 to 3 pounds of force. I've moved the print head forward to get about 150 millimeters of belt length between the XY joint and the front either. Then I measured the tension. My DIY tool reads 2.8, that's a bit too high, so I loosened the idle screw, reduced the tension slightly, and now, measuring again, it's a perfect 2.0. Then I repeat the process for the second belt. And that's it. Once you've done it properly, you be surprised how loose the belts actually should be. Just feeling it by hand is really unreliable here. And how about the other tools? The ball bearing DIY tool gives me the exact same result. The BDT tool shows 5.4, not good. Also, it's really hard to read the screen in tight spaces because it points upward and catches reflections. The Fistec tool shows 7.4, again, because you have to push it forward into place, the belt gets artificially tightened, screwing the results. On the C-axis belts, though, all tools perform decently well. To sum it quickly up, the BTT tool feels the most premium, but printed accessories ruin the accuracy. The Fistick tool looks cheap, but delivers surprisingly good results, at least where the space allows it to use it. And the clear winner, the DIY tool. It's compact, affordable, reliable, and with the right calibration method, there's basically nothing you can go wrong. The only downside, if you don't have the exact piano wire, you will need to use the weight calibration method, but that works great as well. With that, you should have no more belt issues in your next print project. You will find the links to all of the products and helpful resources down in the description below. If you want even more tips for cleaner 3D prints, feel free to subscribe to our channel. If you just want to keep watching, check out this video where we review the LH Stinger, the fastest bed slinger printer of 2024. Or jump over here, where we show you some awesome tricks for getting the most out of Orca Slicer.